Okay, so somebody asked me how to make this kind of thing. So I made a tutorial about it. Need rigs. Ace Fight Studios has rigs. So let us start with creating a sphere. This will be our main thingy pop that we have. And let's put into the cloner object. And let's switch the cloner to honeycomb and make it yxz so it's a nice plane here and let's switch this to circle and switch this to like four and five and we have a nice little honeycomb circle perfect now the next thing i want to do is we're going to have want to connect all of these circles with some splines so let's go down here and go tracer object and let's drag our oh sorry selected it in there okay so now we're going to just switch out so if it's not in here like if it's empty here just drag the cloner into here and then tracer object and connect all objects and we have a zigzag of lines i think you can see where i'm going with this right so let's add a cloner let's add a random effector um random random and let's move these guys just let's tangle them a bit it seems about right here we go to effector maybe change the seed a couple of times see what we get that yeah, seems about right now the next thing i want to do is let's add right now i want it also to be animated right i want these guys to be moving around so let's select this guy and let's add another random effector and this one let's switch it in the effector mode let's switch it to noise <clears throat> and then press play now i might want to increase the these guys a bit so they're moving a little bit more but as you can see they're kind of all moving in this one direction now we can try by reducing the scale of the noise so we have a bit more random movement it actually works pretty well but the problem is that see they're still kind of all moving in this kind of one line kind of thing what we want is we want actually to randomize the direction of these guys. Let's go to cone, I mean a circle, and let's holding the shift key, let's put a cone in it. And let's increase its height a bit, and maybe increase the bottom right. So now we can see which way these spheres are pointing. So the thing is we want these spheres to point in random directions first, and then we want this random noise to move them. We want to, we want to copy this guy, we want to, because right now what we can do is we can change the parameter here. We can change the rotation so that they're random. But the thing is, as you can see, the movement still stays the same. Like if you turn off rotation, they're still moving the same way. Like if you turn off coin, you can see there's no difference in the way they're moving. Because the things we want to do, we want to affect rotation first, and then we want to do the random position noise. So what we do is, in this rotation object, uh, it's random noise, let's turn off the rotation here. And let's copy this guy and write rote here, like random noise rotation. And turn off the position, turn on rotation, and in our cloner, in our effectors, we wanna drag this guy before the random noise happens. And see now, now we have these guys pointing different directions, which makes them move up and down, and you get a much more organic kind of you know, movement among these guys. And the reason I didn't just add the random rotation to this one is because here we can now have animated random rotation noise. So we can increase the speed of this, for example. You can see their rotations are randomly moving faster than their positions, so they're kind of wobbling around. So we can get these more interesting effects. Now, how do we connect them? We need a volume builder. So let's get this cloner and tracer. Let's hold the Alt key and click volume builder. And then let's put the tracer in there as well. But we want the cloner probably just above the tracer. Now, as you can see, we already have a connection. But in this volume bit here, let's just increase this radius. And boom, check out those connections that we have. Let's make the spheres a bit bigger. And look, we have connections. Let's pause the play bit back for a second there. Now, we might want to get our first random one. And let's increase their y. There you go. We have this kind of thing going on. We might also want to increase, I think the sphere's a bit too big. Let's make the sphere smaller again. 
Let's turn off a volume builder for a sec. A random Y. Nope. Send off these two guys. Y. There you go. Now let's turn on these guys. There you go. Wonderful. And turn on volume builder. There you go. This is what we're aiming for. Now, uh, we might want to make these lines a bit thicker. So let's go to our volume builder and our tracer object here. We might want to change the radius here to maybe like 20. Get a bit of thickness because what we're going to do next is we're going to hold selecting the volume builder. We're going to put this guy into a volume mesher. And then we can either use smooth. I think we can add a smooth here, but it'll just let it raise stuff and reduce it. But it's not my favorite approach. It's actually much nicer, I think, is you get this volume measure and you hold, press Alt G and then you hold Shift and you select the smooth, where is it? Smooth thing operator there. And then this guy, you can increase the number of iterations. So you know, it's much more live because it's only smoothing the actual geometry. It's not smoothing the volume stuff, the VDB stuff. So this way now we have these balls moving around. We might want to change the random noise here. Let's increase their distance since we have a bit more moving around. Maybe we went a bit too much on this. Let's change this back to like 800. There you go. And now you have these little ball moving around. And you can obviously design them how you want. You can place them wherever you want. Then you can join them. But basically we have this now structure of gooey liquid balls, as promised. So let's do some basic lighting on this guy as well. Uh, let's use Redshift. Uh, it's a default in Cinema 4D now, and I'm getting better at it. <laughs> so firstly, let's make a material. Click on hold this plus sign, go materials and standard. Now standard material, scroll down here to subsurface and max out the weight, change this to red because this thing that affects the color of it and change this one to yellow. You can obviously change to whatever you want, but this is the second one is a thin color and this is a thick color. And apply it to our volume measure. Now let's go render and RS, no, redshift and RS render view. And as you can see, it's set up. Let's dock it down here. Um, currently it's just red. Let's add an area light, clicking this button here and move the light to the right here and maybe go to the top view and just move it behind here, scale it up. Things about right, maybe a bit higher. Now, right now, as you can see, it's not really see through at all. That's because in our RS standard, we just scroll down again here and we do check out the scale. Two is not enough. Let's make it like 20. There you go, it's see through. You can make like 50 so it's even more transparent. As you can see, this stuff is yellow and you can change the purple or blue, whatever you want. You can make this top main color blue and this one purple, so the see through parts are purple. And you have it also to make it look a bit better. A bit quicker, uh, go to your render settings, this button here up top, and go to Redshift and turn on denoising. And then here, click this button, and you should be able to alternate between with denoise and without denoise. Ta da! And remember, if you need any more characters, we have a bunch of stuff on ace5studios.com. All these characters are animation ready, rigged, have materials, are fully customizable, and you can use them in your own commercial projects. We also have more stuff here, like some free rigs you can try out. We have character building kits. We have packs of simpler characters for infographics and infomercials and whatever it is you're making as kids. There's also some animals there, so go check it out. Won't be sorry.